So, I like to tell you, you know, this time is, you know, we never take this time very lightly because these moments are life changing moments, right? Just remember, you know, God could create everything just by speaking the word. How much more He can do that in your life and my life? Because we are seated in the presence of God. And over and above, we have the third person of the Trinity, the blessed Holy Spirit, who is given to you and me for the purpose of leading us into the fullness of truth. I want to tell you, anybody, you know, be it a man or a woman, or be it a child, you now who embraces the word, who means serious business of the word of God, their life can never be the same. The more the word of God is going to find a logic place in your life, it's able to change your life completely. The word is living and active. So when you read the word, what's going to happen? It is living and active. Amen? Sometimes we are active but not the word. <laughs> We are active with the world, we are active with a lot of things, we are active with the devil, you know, and a lot of other stuff. But the Bible says, when you receive the word, you allow the word to be living and active. So you can see the power of the word working on the inside of you. To be living on the inside and to be active and to affect and to influence every area of your life. Amen? So we never take this moment for granted because we know this is the time the Spirit of God is teaching the Word to His children so that our lives can change. You know, I can change and you can change. We can have a glorious future. Not because we are capable, not because you had a great an education. Are you looking smart? You have a personality. Now we have a hope and the foundation of our hope is we are taught by the Word of God. We believe in the power of the Word that can change anything and everything in us. I have a lot of hope because I am willing to be taught by God. God can change me because I am willing to receive His word. So, be it with you. Amen? So, sometime back I spoke to you about saying that no, Romans 5, 17. How God has called us to live life, you know, being positioned to reign. Sometimes we live life like a victim. You're not called to be a victim, you're called to be a victor. Amen. Amen? You're called to rule and reign in life. You're called to make a difference. You're not at the mercy of the situation or at the mercy of anybody else. You are living under the supernatural influence of the Holy Spirit. The one who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. It's no longer you, but Christ is the one who lives in you. Amen? So not even a moment you are left alone, you need to always, you know, no one understand, you know, your potential is measured in terms of Christ, not in terms of, you know, what you wear. Right? Once you came into the Lord, you know, you and God make the majority. Hallelujah. So never ever belittle yourself. Never ever think low about yourself. Christ is in you, and you are the fullness of God operating on the inside of you. Amen? When Jesus came to your life, He came with power, He came with glory, strength, anointing, wisdom, whatever you don't have, He had it all. So, me and God, now we are a combined force together. I'm going to make a difference in this world. The Bible says, what does it say? Romans 5, 17. Does anyone remember? How much more will those who receive God's a burning portion of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through that one man, Jesus Christ. I wanted you to memorize that. <laughs> Do that at the earliest, right? And keep saying that every time. Word is going to stay in your memory, not because you try to memorize just one or two days, but as much as you use, as much as you decree and declare and confess the word, you're going to sharpen your memory and the word will stay with you forever. Amen? So what does the Bible say? We are called to reign in life. What is the background? Because we are the recipients of God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness so that we may reign in life through that one man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you know that you are called to reign, it changes your mindset. 
It changes the way you look at things. It brings in your sense of authority and power to overcome any kind of situation and every situation for the matter. You're not a victim. You are crowned to be the king. Now remember that I told you sometime back, now thinking about Adam, God called him to be the king. Amen. When God made man, he said one thing, you know, be fruitful and multiply. He didn't stop with that, but he said, rule over everything. That's the thing that God gave to man. Rule over. Today I want to tell you that's the initial design and the purpose that God had for man. To rule over everything. You are positioned to rule over. But man lost it because of sin. And we regain our position when we are saved by Christ through his blood. Amen. So the moment you come into Christ, it changes the way you look at yourself. I'm not a victim. Open your mouth and say, I'm not a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victor. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not what somebody else thinks about you is the problem. More often, what I think about myself, that's the problem. That's the reason you need to always interact with the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to teach you the Word so that you can begin to look at yourself in the way God looks at you. Amen? You're called to reign in life. You know, another verse that I spoke to you about is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. It talks about saying, No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has ever conceived what the Lord has prepared in store for those who love Him. Right? No eyes have seen, no ears have heard. No mind has ever conceived. But how do we get to know those things? It is by the revelation of the Spirit of God. Say revelation. revelation. So I would like to say now, if you want to know more about yourself, you need to take the help of the Spirit of God. I pray now while we are still alive, I don't know how many more years are left for you and me. Amen? But the things that I do not know about myself, I know I expect the Holy Spirit to reveal those things in my life so that I can begin to claim it. I, mean, I can begin to proclaim it. I can begin to pray about that so I can receive those things. You follow what I'm talking about? Jeremiah was a very young boy of 17 years. When God told him, no, Point blank, he told him one thing. Hey, I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Nobody could have ever told Jeremiah about who he could have, what he could have become. It was God who told him, you're going to be a prophet to the nations. Say amen. amen. I want to tell you, neither your dad, mom, brothers, all your friends, they don't have any ideas to who you are. You need to understand about that. Even I don't care what people think about you or say about you, it doesn't matter. But the one who formed you in your mother's womb, even before he could create you in your mother's womb, he had a full-fledged master print concerning your life and the beauty of your existence, the beauty of your destiny. Amen? That's why the Bible says, even before the foundation of the world, God knew about you. It's alarming, mind-boggling. My little human mind, you know, it cannot contain or configure how much, you know, uh, no, I'm special to God. Job says, Now who is man that you should be mindful about him and you should watch over him, test him every morning. Hallelujah. I believe the one weakness that God has, <laughs> it is love. <laughs> Have you ever felt that when you love somebody, you become vulnerable? No, I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about or not. When you love somebody, you become Vulnerable. They mess around. They do a lot of wrong things. You know, and still, you're hurting along with them. You don't want to disconnect. You don't want to throw them away. But still, you want to help them, redeem them. You follow what I'm talking about? The same with Jesus Christ. When man sinned, God himself became very vulnerable. Because God loved you and me. That's why the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave us only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. One weakness that God has, it is love. Now, I won't say it is weakness, it is power. But what I'm trying to say, you understand what, I'm, what I mean, right? He allowed Himself to be a curse, you know, to, to, to be killed on the cross, 
And not all just for you and me because of love. Amen? So now, you know, what God knows about you, nobody else ever knew about yourself. That is the truth. Right? Did you hear what I said? Yes. What God knows about you, nobody else knows. They only look at the outward appearance. But God knew why he created you. That's why it's very, very important that you listen to God, not to other people. Those things must be revealed to you by the Spirit of God. The work of the Spirit is to reveal things what no man could ever tell you. Those things don't happen because you, you go around talking to people, asking them you know, what, what they think about yourself. No, it cannot happen that way. You follow what I'm saying? God knows about you. He's the one who created you. If you want to know more about yourself, go to his presence. Go to him. Open up your heart and your mind. And ask the Lord, Lord, open my eyes that I may see my, about myself in the way you see me. Those things must be revealed. Amen? That's why the Bible says, No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has ever conceived what the Lord has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Get excited. Your journey with God is very exciting. We are limited, but God is not limited. Amen. Not by mind or by power, but by His Spirit. In every situation, God works. What does the Bible say? Romans 8.28 In everything, God works together for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Hallelujah. So now, and I finished with, you know, last time, Ephesians 1, 17, right? Then the Bible says, I keep asking God to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. Hold on for a moment, just look at me. What we are asking God is not just some human wisdom. Or some kind of understanding. Right? The Bible says, I keep asking God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Always remember, it is not something you discover because you are educated. Because you are very highly intellectual. You follow what I am talking about? You discover things because it is revealed to you. Revelation is by the spirit of God. And here Paul says, and I keep praying... Not once or twice. In Greek, it's a iorist tense. That means present, continuous. He says, I keep on praying and praying and praying without ceasing for one thing that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. For what? Not to just get some more blessings, but to know Him better. Pause for a moment. I would like to tell you something. We all need to get excited about one thing, it is about knowing God personally. It is not knowing about God. Knowing about God is more to do with information. Knowing God has to do with revelation. What you and I need is not some more information. What you and I we need is the revelation. When the word is revealed, it revolutionizes your life. It changes your life. It transforms your life. You can now be the same person. Amen. You follow what I'm talking about? So what we need is the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can know him better. Now I told you last time, never ever think that you, knew, you know enough about God. Oh, I know about Jesus. What do you know? One lifetime wouldn't be sufficient to know even about God. Even eternity wouldn't be sufficient. You understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? You know, we know God enough as much as we should know based on what is revealed through the word of God until we depart from this world. When you go to heaven, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, we see like a poor reflection in a mirror, then we shall see him face to face as he is. The Bible also says, you know, today we live by faith and not by sight, but when you get to heaven, we don't need faith nor hope. Because faith and hope will become a reality. Amen? 
we're going to see our Lord Jesus face to face. Amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Those who are alive today, they're not alive today. They are in the presence of God, beholding the face of the Father. Amen. So that's the kind of hope that we have, not just for this world, but for the world to come. And any time the transit can take place. Now you can't say, now I want to live here for another 20, 30 years. Maybe you can wish that. And now it may be you, it may be me. None of us, we are going to live here forever, right? Every time you celebrate your birthday, you are one step closer to your exit, right? Death is not a bad thing. Death is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. That's the time you need to celebrate about the soul that has gone to be with God forever. When you die, you only change the place. <laughs> and it do, it be to exist in a different dimension in your spirit and your soul. But you are the same person. But you are liberated from all the limitations of being physical in this world. You follow what I'm talking about? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Maybe in your family, in your loved ones, there are a lot of people you miss today. But the point is, they have gone ahead of us. What I'm trying to say, they have gone to be with the Lord. Amen? It's a beautiful place, a glorious place. And now a little human mind cannot comprehend all those things unless until you get there. Amen? So but the Bible says, you know, but we are here on, the, on this earth where we are getting ready you know, to live with God forever and ever. That's why we need faith. That's why we need hope. First Corinthians 13, it says, faith, hope, and love. These three things remain. But finally, the only one thing will be left over. What is that? Love. love. Amen? In heaven, you don't need faith. <laughs> you don't need hope. <laughs> because all that we, you know, we believe and hope for, it's going to be a reality. Then we shall be in the presence of God. We're going to love Him forever and ever and ever. Live for all eternity where there's not going to be any end. Why I'm saying what I'm saying, there's a reason. You know, he says, pray to the Lord that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Thank God for the way I have known him until now for so many years. But every time I pick up my Bible, when I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to pray to the Father, Lord, reveal a little more about yourself. No, reveal a little more about your son, Jesus Christ, and the blessed Holy Spirit. I want to know something about you. Every time you know something about God himself, and know Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, it's going to change something in you. The knowledge about who he is, it's going to have an impact in your life. It's going to change your life. It's going to impart something in your life because you are created in the image of God. Say amen. amen. We are created in the image of God. So knowing God personally by the revelation of scriptures, it's going to transform as a person as to who you are. Amen? It's going to, you know, directly, it's going to have some kind of impact upon yourself because you yourselves are created in the image of God. Amen? So I'm created in the image of God. Now, a lot of times, you know, people don't have a self-image. The word imagination is the extension of the word image. All right? I'm not going to ask you, you know, what do you think about yourself, but all of us, you know, we need to have a good self-esteem, good image, self-image of yourself, right? If you get depressed because don't, people don't uh, treat you well or they don't say nice things about you, that shows only you have a very poor self-image. If there is somebody who's going to go into depression and... Uh, um, discouraged because people don't say good things about you they don't treat you well that only shows that you don't have a self image about yourself all the time you depend upon somebody else to credit credit that in your life you follow what i'm saying if you say no no i'm a good man you know and appreciate me that's going to be fine if you say something negative it doesn't bother me because i know who i am how 
because my self esteem my self image is being constituted is being developed systematically day after day as i allow the spirit of god to teach me the word i am created in the image of god i come to know who i am because i know the word because i know who god is i am an outcome of god i am an outcome of his death and the resurrection i am blood bought i am born of god christ is in me i am the temple of the holy spirit amen i am a overcomer i am a winner you follow what i'm saying you know i'm called to reign in life i have the mind of christ i have the gifts of the holy spirit i have the spirit of boldness not the spirit of timidity amen and you tell me now i am a crack you know you are telling and talking about yourself you follow what i'm saying i am not what you think i am i know who i am you know i am the result of what jesus had done for me on the cross amen somebody appreciates me it's going to be fine if they talk nonsense it is their problem i will love them forgive them but i know who i am i'm not going to go into depression <laughs> or discouragement you know it's a question of developing your self esteem day after day hour after hour as you pour yourself into the scriptures getting to know who god is the more you know about who god is the more you know about yourself say amen, amen. because i am created in the image of god it's going to be simple listen what is true about christ is going to be true about me amen, amen. what is true about jesus it's going to be true about me why that is what god paid for me on the cross amen. if you ask me how much i am worth i want to tell you the price tag on my life reads jesus tons of gold and silver cannot measure my worth how much i am worth to god he gave his only son for me to die for me on the cross amen, amen. always remember you're special nobody has to tell you it's written in the word the reason you are alive today it's because god loves you amen. the bible say you know some of the uh, what do you call top celebrities uh, rich people rich business people they die just like that why because the wicked they are just gone without any warning the bible says right but the lord says for the righteous he will fulfill the span of life amen you see your children your children's children you follow what i'm talking about amen so we need to understand that yes and now i have the grace of god so i am unstoppable say i am the i have the grace of god and i am unstoppable hallelujah we fall down but we get up <laughs> you understand what i'm saying and now we fall down but quickly we get up we got a mechanism takes care of ourselves we have a beautiful mechanism in place you know when you fall down there's a hand that picks you up makes you to walk again by the grace of god i am what i am never ever try to define yourself based upon your money your wealth your success your beauty or you know all the other things all those things may be taken away from you but still you must know who you are amen, amen. define yourself always based on what jesus has done for you on the cross amen? amen that is your true identity because the bible says we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken hallelujah you can shake everything but not the kingdom into which i moved amen i'm living in the kingdom of god hallelujah we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, shaken. job lost a lot of things but he said the lord gave the lord has taken back blessed be the name of the lord i know my redeemer lives when everybody was talking about this you now your cattle was dead donkeys were dead your servants were dead but he said my redeemer lives it's enough he's alive all the other things may be dead and gone but i don't care my redeemer lives but i will see him on the last day i will not deny my integrity amen so now ephesians 1:17 says god would like to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better who knows god 
I'm not talking about who knows about God. You can know about Modi. If I ask you, do you know Modi? Oh, you will say no. But does he know you? No. And now when you say, no, I know Modi, and now you're talking about information. Right? If I go to Modi and ask, you know, do you know Vijay? He says yes. Then it means a relationship. Not knowing about, knowing personally. A lot of people, they know about God. They do not know God. So when the Bible says, so that you may know him better, that means uh, you need to pray to God, Lord, help me to know you better. I want to know something more about you that I never knew about yourself. Amen? Something new about God. Your eyes must be open to see God in different dimensions. Hallelujah. When he calmed the storm and the sea and the waves, uh, the disciples asked, Hey, who is this? Did they not know about him? They knew. But the kind of man they saw at that time was totally different. That kind of Jesus they never seen in their life. He just spoke the word and rebuked the storm and the sea and it became quiet. They asked the question, who is this? The next response was, the Bible says, they worshipped him. Worship is the response to knowing who God is. A lot of times people come to know, worship God with a bad attitude. You know why? <clears throat> they do not know Him. Simply, they do not know Him. If you know God, your worship will change. Amen? Your worship is a response to knowing who God is. Uh, the more and more you know about God, the next thing that's going to happen by default, you're going to respond back to God and worship. You'll fall down on your knees and say, how great the word. How awesome you are. You know, you, you find yourself bo you know, boring in your worship experience. Probably you do not know God as much as you should know. You'll come to a point of stagnation. There's nothing new about God you ever know. That's why it's, you know, exciting to have a supernatural experience with God in His presence. Amen? The kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking or even talking. It's all about power. Say power. Power to live a life that is above sin, that is above every curse, that's above every demon. Yes? We are connected to a supernatural power. We are not the source of power, but we are connected to the source of power. We don't produce power, but we get the supply of power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. And now you need to pray, God, give me power. A lot of Christians, they live a life without power. Right? Power is available. The another point is they are not connected. Last time I told you, right? The room is full of darkness. All that I need to do is go and switch it on. When I turn it on, the light comes. Amen? Power is there. Sometimes we do not know how to get connected. How to turn on the power. God is always there. His power is there to help you, to heal you, to deliver you. To supply all your needs. Sometimes we do not know the scriptures uh, and we are living with the ignorance of the scripture and as a result we are not connected. You follow what I'm saying? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be given to you. John 15 7. My words should abide in you. Amen? And the word abides in you. You know the word. And you're going to go to God based on the word that he promised you. Amen? Hallelujah. Your prayer life will change. So make this your desire, your ambition, your prayer. I want to know God better. God, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now that's the key to solve some of your own problems. The Bible talks about Isaiah being a prophet. Those days, another prophet, now they didn't speak like how we do. They always spoke like, thus says the Lord. Literally in the community of Israel, if there's a prophet, he will speak on behalf of God. 
He was the mouthpiece of God. Even the king, you now he cannot go beyond what the prophet says. When they want to go for war, they have to wait for the word from the prophet. You will hear from God. Should we go to the war or not? When the prophet says go, when he gives the word, then the army will proceed. Everything was governed by the words of the prophet. But do you see about Isaiah? When he had an when he had a vision, the eyes were open to see the Lord. Now I say chapter 6, right? You understand the vision? The cherubim, seraphims, they were all flying around the throne of God. They had six wings. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. Right? With the two, they were flying. And they were singing only one song, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. When he saw that, immediately he began to shout. He said, Oh, unto me. In other words, and I was saying, I'm cursed. You know why? He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. That's a contradiction. How can somebody who can speak the very words of God, prophecy, who could be considered as the mouthpiece of God, now he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. That shows about a duplicitous life, double standard life. He appears to be one on the outside, but totally he's a different person. But you see that I don't know how many years he was like that. Later on you find the reason why that uncleanness in his mouth came because he says, I live among the people of unclean lips. You follow what I'm saying? The Bible says bad company corrupts good character. You can never be a good man or a righteous man or a righteous woman when you have a bad company. The people around you, if they are not godly, what they think, what they say, it will defile your spirit. A lot of things can be transferred into your life. You follow what I'm saying? Choose right friends. Choose right kind of people with whom you talk to. Right? You follow what I'm saying? But then, when he had the vision of God, he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. So now he knew God as he never knew before. He saw the holiness of God. In the light of the holiness, he saw himself as an unclean person. So I told you, now so many times, and as I keep repeating, the more you know about him, the better you know about yourself. Amen? Amen? I'm not changing. You know why we don't change? You know, we have stopped knowing God. No way you can have an encounter with God and still be the same person. It is impossible. Right? The more I know about him, that's going to be the key to solve some of the issues that I struggle in life. Amen? Don't keep on saying, I have a problem. No, and I have this issue. It has been there for many years. Hey, you do not know about God. That's your problem. If you know about God, your knowledge concerning who God is will change some of the things in your life. Yes or no? No, you're not getting what I'm talking about. All the time you focus on yourself. You always say, no, oh, I'm not able to overcome. You may be sincere, but still you're bound. You're not simply able to overcome. You follow what I'm talking about? Because the focus is on you. Oh, I am weak. I have this problem. I have this issue. I have this issue in my business. I have a problem in my family. I have a problem now here, there. Because the focus is on you. Your focus should be on God. Don't focus on the problem. Don't focus on sin. Don't focus on demons. Don't focus on sickness. Focus on God. The moment you turn your eyes on Jesus, you begin to be part of the solution. What we need is the solution. We don't want to talk and discuss about our problem. We know about our problem. What we know is the solution. Amen? It's a no. So when you focus on God, what's going to happen? When Isaiah saw him, immediately his life began to change. Right? The Bible talks about Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus. He was shot. So he could not see. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree. When Jesus was passing by, now he wanted to see. When Jesus came to the spot and I stopped, he looked at him. And he called him my name. He was surprised. Hey, you can even know about my name. He said, Saggy has come down. So he did. He said, I want to come and stay in your house. It was not a secret talk. It was an open declaration. 
All the people are saying. People are murmuring. All the so-called no, Pharisees, Sadducees. It's going to be the guest of a sinner. Jesus is now minded about these things. But immediately you see the response. What is the response? He never thought Jesus, you know, being the son of God, would pass by, would call him by name. And even say, I want to come and stay in your house. Even come to the house. He never expected. Suddenly he said, Lord, if I've taken anything you know, wrongly, I'm going to pay back four times more. What caused the change? You know, I always say, Jesus never condemns you. Sometimes we have a wrong picture about who God is. The day for condemnation is going to come. When he comes upon the sky, right, second time, not as a savior. First time he came as a savior. The second time Jesus is going to come as a judge. Amen. With the trumpet sound of an archangel. All those who are dead. They will rise up first. And those who are alive. Then we also will be caught up in the air. Right? That's what the word says. And that's the time he is going to condemn those who did not believe in God. But now there is no condemnation. Now it's the time for salvation. Amen? So what caused the change? Knowing about who Jesus is. Right? Knowing about who Jesus is. When you know him better, you'll become a better person. So what we need, we need to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen? Your work with God is going to be highly exciting. You'll never come to church dragging yourself. Your prayer time will be exciting. When you read the Bible, it's going to be exciting because your eyes are open to see some things by the Holy Spirit, not just in a few letters of the scripture. Your eyes are open to see the treasures hidden in the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For example, I want to tell you something. Now, I was reading in a couple of days back. I was reading about in a Hebrew summon. It was talking about Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered. Right? I read that word so many times. But then it said, no, he learned obedience from what he suffered. So God no, designated him. Somebody read that word. I want you to read. God designated him to be the son of God. The word designated no, it just blew me off. It touched me so much. Yeah. He became the source of eternal salvation yeah. for all who obey him. And mm. designated by God to be the high priest. Awesome. You know, you see this verse, it talks about, you know, saying that, you know, I'm going to read from verse 7 onwards. You know, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from the dead. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what it says, he learned obedience from what he suffered though he was a son. God doesn't care who you are. Hello. The only thing that matters the most in the kingdom of God is obedience. Some people, they never learn obedience. Even Jesus, the Bible says, he learned obedience because he came in flesh and blood, because of what he suffered. But once he was made perfect, say perfect. So why God does allow suffering sometime? To learn things. Amen. So David says, it's good I suffered because of that I learned your commandments. Amen. So don't talk about your suffering. You know, tell me what you learn. If you don't learn anything, <laughs> God's going to repeat the process all over again. Hello. Until the time you learn. Just like you know, you have to keep on repeating the exam until you pass. Right? Sometimes people suffer, they don't learn anything. The Bible says Jesus suffered, but he learned obedience from what he suffered. Then what is the outcome? Once he was made perfect, the Bible says, he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who believe in him. And also the Bible says, God designated him to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. That's a fantastic thing. After having gone through the suffering and the pain and learned obedience, God not only made him perfect, but he designated 
That designation is going to come for all of us. Say amen. amen. That's why we go through trouble, but we go through trouble with hope because God's going to bring a designation on you. And God's going to bring a designation and appoint you to be somebody. Joseph suffered, but the Bible says God designated, God appointed him as the governor of Egypt. Say amen. amen. Daniel was thrown in the line of dens, but God lifted him up. So, Shetra, Meshach, Ebed, Nego. Right? Never feel sorry for yourself if you serve a big God and mighty God. Amen. Sometimes we want to feel sorry for ourselves, right? We like that feeling. Oh, we call up people and say, Oh, I'm feeling this, that. They say, Oh, are you, are you pound. They talk with you, they cry with you, you feel good. Is it going to help you? Mm, people would have come to comfort them, right? They'll say, Hayo, Hayo, is it so? I feel so sorry for you. Hey, how will you encourage their faith? Mm? For every word you say, Hayo, 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 it should not happen to you. You're killing them, killing their faith. You understand what I'm saying? Mm? We need people who will speak life into our spirit, faith into our spirit, saying, Don't worry, God is there. I know, don't worry, God is bigger than your situation, bigger than your problem, bigger than anything you face. They'll be encouraged. Right? So I advise for you, don't go and vomit anything with people who don't have faith. They'll murder you. Hello? It can be your dad, your mom, your brother, sister. Shut your mouth and just pray to God. Go to people who will encourage you, not discourage you. Yes or no? Yes. Amen? I know a guy, you know, yeah. uh, his father was dying of cancer. But then he used to do his dad, you know, for about two, three months. And spoke to him only about glory, heaven, and all the things. I want to tell you, when his dad died, though he was old, but he died with so much peace and happiness. Because he had a son who was talking about heaven. Right? He encouraged his father. Amazing. Now, till we live our last breath, we need to live with faith in our heart. Amen? It's not a question of how long we live. It's a question of how we live. Jesus lived only for 33 and a half years and 3 and a half years a rigorous ministry. Pray to God, Lord, let use my life. If I'm born in this world, I know there is a purpose. There is a reason why you created me in this world and I want to live for you. Amen? Yes or no? I want to know God better. That should be a prayer. I pray that not tonight that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. Amen? Don't get stagnated. Don't get familiar with God. A lot of people get familiar with God. Familiarity brings contempt. That's how now we, we get into a kind of uh, a stagnation. Prayer is not exciting. Reading the Bible is not exciting. Worshipping God is not exciting. Because you stop knowing God. We develop an attitude that is anti-God. We pray to God, we don't give respect. We come to worship God, we don't care. We come very late to church. We cheat our God with the tithes and offerings. There are a lot of things that don't go right with us because we have stopped knowing God. All the time you understand that God works in our lives only to reveal more about himself. Amen? So that you can become more like him because you are created in the image of God. Amen? He spoke the word and created everything. Let there be a lion. The lion came into existence. Let there be a tiger. The tiger came. But for man, what did he do? He didn't say, now let there be a man. He said, I'm going to work a little bit. But he said one thing, I'm going to create him in my own image. Let's make man in our own image. That blows my mind. Now the devil is mad about that. The one thing he cannot tolerate, because he knows that we are created in the image of God. 
the word Naba, we have become the objects of God's law. And we are the recipients of God's law. So all the time he's trying to accuse you and me. Hey, he doesn't deserve love. Oh God, why can why should show love to him? He doesn't deserve, she doesn't deserve. They should be now killed. But God is merciful. Say God is merciful. God is merciful. To be merciful is about being just. <laughs> Did you ever understand that? It's not the same. If God is a just God, then all of us should have been killed, so he is a just God. Right? If we exercise the law and the law, law to play its own course, and the law says, you know, everyone commits you know, sin shall die, we should surely die. God can destroy all of us. Then we can say God is a just God. But to be merciful is being above you know, the justice. Right? But so how does God do it then? That's a tricky question. You can never be merciful by not being just. You have to be just and also be rise about the being just and exercise mercy. How can it take place? To be just is to fulfill the obligations of the law. Right? So there's no place for mercy as far as the law is concerned because the law says tooth for tooth, eye for eye. <laughs> he has to take care of both these things. He can't bypass the law. If he bypasses this law, then God is not a just God. He is unrighteous. He is a law breaker. Why? He is the one who gave the law. He can't break his own law. You follow what I'm talking about? So he has to fulfill the obligations of the law on one hand, on the same hand, he must save you and me from being destroyed. So now God devised a supernatural divine mechanism. That's called the cross. Right? What the law was powerless to do in you and me, the Bible says, uh, Romans 8, 2. He did that by sending his only son. So the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. Say amen. amen. Right? The law says, you know, you must die for your sins. Jesus said, yes, I'm coming. They will not die, but I'm going to take their sins upon my life, and I'm going to die in their place. So he died, fulfilling all the obligations of the law. Nothing was spending in the law. He told the law, law, all your requirements are fulfilled. I shed my own blood. They committed sins, but they don't have to pay. I paid with my own blood, so I fulfill all the righteous requirements of the law. So Christ became the end of the law. Say amen. amen. So he told the law, shut your mouth. Don't talk about my children. Right? So he disconnected you and me from laws. We don't serve God according to the laws. We serve God in the new way of the spirit. Somebody shout amen. amen. Then he said, now, since I am a just God, I demonstrated my justice. How? Yes, Not by passing the law. I have fulfilled the law. By paying with my own blood. So now, I'm going to show mercy. Amen? So he has qualified himself to show mercy. Amen? So if you're not just, no, you are not qualified even to show mercy. You follow what I'm saying? God showed mercy to you and me. That's the reason you could justify you and me from sin, from curse. Nobody else can never ever point against you again. It is paid in full. You are free to live a life without guilt, without condemnation. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Are you blessed? Yes. Blessed tonight? Yes. So I would like to encourage you to keep asking God to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. As you know better about God, you will rediscover about yourself. Father, we want to thank you for all those who are here tonight to learn the word and all those who are watching us through the net. I decree and declare, oh God, all those who are here will receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know you better, oh God. The more we know about yourself, the more we discover about ourselves. Oh God, I pray right now, oh God, if somebody is struggling, Lord, deliver them, oh God. Destroy every demonic work that is assigned against their life, against their body, their soul, and spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare 
They'll be free right now in Jesus' name. As they walk out of this place, oh God, I pray, they'll go as a free man knowing that Jesus fulfilled all the righteous obligations and requirements of the law. And he became the end of the law. And now, being the Son of God, Lord, he has saved us from all the condemnation of sin of Father and death of God. And we live a new life, Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, we have received eternal life. We received, O oh God, our justification. So we are bold than ever before. We have the confidence through the blood of Jesus Christ, our oh Father. I bless your children tonight. I want to give you glory and honor, power and praise. We love you. We praise you. We want to live for you. In Jesus' mighty, powerful, matchless, never failing name, we pray. God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you.